Okay, in this video, we have TYT on the channel today. We're going to take a listen about this one. According to their title, Mega Christian Nationalists Find Out Trump's Kids Are Jewish. And again, he's been trying. They've been trying so hard to... What they're doing here is trying to expose Trump's reporters as bad. I listen to it and I'm like, yo, it's not exactly what you're saying. All right, it's a setup. But some of these people, they manage themselves exceptionally well. But, you know, I have to understand these videos are edited, they're clipped, you know, so you don't get the whole story. And you, you can easily paint a very negative image of a, of, a, of a person if you know what to do when you're editing video. And a lot of what is, go, that's what's going on here. But anyway, let's take a listen to their message. I think a lot of what they say I'd agree with, but at least they, you know, still being painted in a negative way. So link in the description below, like and subscribe to the page, click the bell icon for more. Let's take a listen. Nationalism, what does that mean to you and do you think that we should be a Christian nationalist country? Uh, I believe that we should be protecting our freedom of religion and it seems that Christianity is under attack in this country. Um, it's pretty evident when college campuses allow things um, to be talked about everything under the sun, but when anyone tries to speak about Christianity, they're pretty much shut down. Um, you see it in protests around the country. People are shut down and it's really unfortunate. So it is important to me that that's protected. And do you think the Bible should be taught in public schools? Yeah. I, I mean, why not? We have a separation of church and state. You know, it might be to some people, but not to me. I just know that God is in charge and whatever he does is the, it's the only thing to be doing or that can be done so he's going to take a lot he's going to go a long ways before he destroys the evil and what's the evil as you define it now yeah well you know i i, I can't go that far i know the evil and you know the evil but we don't speak it that way christians don't anyway i don't no, I, I mean, when you, when you refer to evil, because I don't know what, you know, evil to me is people who kill people. Well. <laughs> Not really, buddy. There's much more to it. But I see what she's trying to say. I understand where she's coming from. But again, let's see. Let's see how she managed herself here. Biden's evil. And that's about all I can say to that. Mm. In, what, in what ways is he evil? Well, you, you know, yeah, I, I got it all out. Thank you. All right. So the Constitution was not written for uh, immoral, unjust people. The Constitution was written for moral, spiritual. We did a full reaction to this minister before. Um, he was very well balanced in his video. So I'm watching the one that he's clipping here and putting this stuff out of context. Let's see how he does this. But anyway, the man was very balanced last time I've listened to him. People who could discern the times and the seasons through the word of God. We have... Uh you know, God, God is trying to help America, and the man for the mission is Trump. So we need to follow Trump. Uh, but what if Trump were to lose? What would that mean that, that, that it didn't work out, or what would it mean for the country? Well, God has his plan, and God knows everything. If, if that happens, uh, it means suffering for the people. And I don't think uh, God wants that at this point in time. I think that uh, most of America is a faithful uh, people. America is actually following Christ more than we think. And I think that God knows this. Do you think America should be an exclusively Christian country? Uh, yes. But I think that it should be a Christian country. Uh, not exclusively, but... Christian values and principles should be upheld without violating uh, freedom of conscience. That's not easy to bind the two, but it can be done. Like when you go back to having Bible in schools, the, the world was a much better place when we had Bibles in school. I had a, done a video about what happens over time when we got rid of prayer and Bible out of schools. We did not become a better people. <laughs> Just letting you know. We lost our minds. So that's what history have shown. Doesn't necessarily mean we should legislate Christianity or religious laws to the point where other religious folks or other people's religion is violated. I'm, I'm against that. But to be ashamed of being a Christian as an American, I'm also against that. I, I, uh -uh. Let's say we became a Christian country. What would you say to your Jewish 
friends and neighbors? Well, I think that um, the base of this nation was Christianity, and they know that, you know. Just like Israel was uh, the Jewish religion, and we know that, and we love them, mm -hmm. you know, and we respect them for how their nation is, and they respect us for how our, our nation is run. And I think that, uh, you know, both nations are very, very close, commandments-wise and everything. I think that... Uh, the right path is to keep America uh, uh, Christ-like America. Yeah, but we have a separation of church and state in this country. Uh, there is a separation, but not in the Constitution. The Constitution uh, was uh, based uh, on the, our Heavenly Father. I don't think they use those words though, right? Uh, not those words, but the men that did the job of writing the Constitution, they were very faithful men. And we're standing in Virginia. Thomas Jefferson wrote the Articles of Religious Freedom, that everybody here is free to worship whomever they please. Do you think we should teach the Bible in public school? Uh, yes, I do. I do believe that. Uh, I, I believe that it does bring the spirit uh, of, uh, of uh, America. You know, people who have an issue with teaching the Bible in school, they don't think about all the other stuff that are being taught in school that are kind of religious in nature. Like evolution is a form of religion, by the way, right? And Satanism, gender ideology is a religious movement. Like just letting you know, even though, and it's being taught to children at a young age, so it violates uh, this whole idea of you can't bring the Bible to the school. Is it because it's the Bible? No, if you are, I don't, I don't, when it comes to public school, it's a different story. That's why I advocate more for private school. Uh, but if a child doesn't want to sit and have to study the Bible, I'm, I'm okay with that. They should be able to opt out. I understand that a parent doesn't have to subject their children to any of it. Or just take them to a school where this is not being taught, right? But I don't think, so the argument that you can teach the Bible in school is like bad. It's like, really? You think it's bad to have Bible in schools? Like, are you out of your mind? Like, since the Bible has been out of school, how, how are you doing? How are we doing today? And that it helps the children. You know, Michael Flynn, he said that if the country is one nation under God, it should be one nation under one God. Do you agree with that? Yes, I do. Yes. So what would that do for Donald Trump's Jewish children who don't worship the same God? But don't they still? I mean, it's still the same God. They just don't worship... Christianity. Well, they don't worship Jesus. Right, right. Isn't so, Jesus the God of Christianity? Well, he, he is. He's three in one. <laughs> yeah. um, so. Um, and what about your our you know Muslim people in the country? Should they be made to worship Jesus as well? No. I don't, no. I, I guess I guess everybody we should have our. our how about we keep religion out of it? <laughs> Michael Flynn the other day said that the. I agree. It should be kept out of the conversation from that sense. But the issue is that, I mean, the way he's asking the questions, you know, <laughs> it's just the thing is you cannot force your religious beliefs on anybody. It's just as simple as that. Country is one nation under God. Do you believe with that? I do. He's saying because we're one nation under God, we should be one nation under one God. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. So what, what then, you know, like Donald Trump has children and gr grandchildren who are being uh, raised Jewish. What would happen in that case to, to people like that? Um, well, the Jewish religion, that they have the right to believe in, in their person, which is God. The, Jew, the Jewish religion believes in God. I personally am Roman Catholic. I believe in God. I believe in Jesus. And what about a Muslim, uh, you know, friend or colleague? Uh, what would would they have the same protections? As far as their religion goes, of sure. Yeah. So that Michael Flint and one nation under one God, it's not. He's saying that there's one Christian God, is the way I hear it. But you're saying that that shouldn't be. Well, in so what would you want us to be? One nation under many gods. <laughs> But if you go to Palestine, if you go to different nations, even if you go to China, they, they have their religious beliefs. You, you can live there. You don't have to practice what they believe. But what they believe is what they believe. It's like, why do we have to be ashamed of being Christian in a nation where the Constitution has at the heart Christian values? You can still uphold Christian values without 
you understand, without violating freedom of conscience. You can uphold Christian values and respect other people's religion. We don't have to put chains around their neck. You don't have to say, unless they worship the way I do, you don't have to go to that degree. But if they come here, they should understand Jesus is king. That's all. In my eyes, it is because I am a Christian. Right, but should it be mandated to the country is what I'm saying. Should we be one nation under one God as no. the United States of America? Well, that's, that's what's printed on our money and that we should. We say in God we trust, right? Correct. Our money, right. But, but I'm, I'm asking, do you think we should all adopt one God, the same God? I think if whatever religion you're in, you believe whatever high, higher being is. Or you're an atheist. And well, I'm, I'm not, not. No, no, not you. I, I, I'm not I, I, saying I'm sorry, yeah, no, that you're. And I don't like th that, you know. Michael Flint said that America is one nation under God. And he says, if America is one nation under God, they should be one nation under one God. Do you agree with that? I, I'm an American, you know, one nation under God. That's how I feel, but that's a little touchy. You know, a little touchy. General Flynn recently said that America is, should be one nation under God and one nation under one God. How do you feel about that? Under one God? I am a Christian myself and I do believe in God. I think that there's a lot of unholiness that happens and there's more things. I think it's just, it's on a much deeper level when it comes to big politicians. We have career politicians nowadays. We don't have anyone who is of the working class any longer. We have career politicians and I don't, I don't believe that that's right, so. And then uh, finally, I want to ask, um, we, we were talking about being a Christian. Um, Michael Flynn, who you recall from the previous yeah, administrations, yeah. he recently said that if America should be one nation under God, they should also be one nation under one God. Um, what do you think of that? As a Christian, I mean, I'm a Catholic, but overall I'm a Christian. And I don't really agree with him on that end. I mean, we all disagree on things. President Biden's a Catholic, and he's you know, an observant Catholic. He goes to church every Sunday. Yeah. Um, how do you feel about not supporting someone, or do you feel a bind to support someone who is Catholic? I don't feel a bind to support him. I don't think he should be receiving communion as a Catholic um, to support abortion and the murdering of millions of innocent children. I don't know how he can receive communion and say he's a Catholic. I don't know how he could do that. And, and it's as our faith. That's what, that's what we believe and we're a pro-life church. I mean, our, I go to church right down the road and every single Sunday, that's the first thing they say is we are a pro-life church and for him to have the position he does and not support that, it's pretty embarrassing to be honest. There's a lot of talk about religion in this election and Christian nationalism. What does that mean to you, Christian nationalism? Well, I'm a Christian, so, you know, I believe in all of it. I, and I believe Donald Trump is a Christian and, you know, it's a good Lord that put us here. It's a good Lord that, that writ, wrote the Constitution. Yeah. That's what it's all about. And, you know, so yeah, I'm, I'm all about it. You're crediting the Lord with the Constitution? I'm sorry, what was You're that? You're crediting the Lord with the Constitution? Yeah, why not? Yes, I am. I credit him with everything. Michael. Does, does this guy know the history of the Dark Ages? And uh, Like, the American Constitution is one of the greatest things ever written. Like we've we've literally become the nation that we are because of our constitution. Were it not for this constitution, like we will not be as great of a nation as we are. That's why I have an issue with people going against it in such a drastic way. Even the religious aspect of it, like the freedom of church and state in America, I believe in the freedom of separation of church and state. The reason that is, is because in a constitution, it allows people who disagree with you to have a voice and opinion about things. And those who agree with you can choose to side with you or not. That's, that's up to them. But also when it comes to religious aspects of it, like it's the best thing ever happened, man. Because before in the old world, you were persecuted just because you believed differently than the established church. You understand? The established church will say, you don't agree with us. This was the result. That was not a good thing. Thank God for the American Constitution. Michael Flynn, he recently said that we are one nation under God, and he thinks we should be one nation under one God. Do you agree with that as well? Well, yes and no. That's a, that's a, that's a, it's a fine line there. I believe in Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. If somebody else wants to believe something, that's up to them. Don't push it on me just because I don't believe in it. Don't push your, you know, your religion, your, your, you know, your, your uh, sexuality. That's fine. If you want to be that way, be that way. Don't push it on me.
General Flynn, he recently said that America is one nation under God. But he also went further and said America is one nation under one God. It should be. Do you think that should be the case? This nation was founded on Judeo-Christian principles. So, you know, we, we're a welcoming nation. It's just that we're a nation of laws, and if they keep coming over illegally, we're not. We can't support it. Michael Flynn, who you probably know from, yeah. you know, Michael Flynn the other day said that uh, if we are one nation under God, then we should be one nation under one God. Do you think that's true? I mean, there is one God. Yes, that's true. It's one God. But there, there's so many different religions that have their own God, I guess. Yeah, that's what he meant. He meant instead of having Allah, you know, the Muslim God and, and the Buddha God and yeah. Correct. So Indians, they didn't have a God. They had what, spirits or something? Personally believe in Christ is our savior and he's exactly. the son of God. Just don't force you. Exactly. I love I love her answer. That's that's true. There's only one true God, right? But there are different people with different conviction about gods. And there are other gods which I don't necessarily believe. I believe uh, like the Bible says, the, the gods of these worlds, they are idols, but the Lord has made the heavens. So yeah, but the Bible also says you should you should worship the Lord your God and him only you should serve in the Ten Commandments. In Exodus 20, I am the Lord your God. You shall not have no other gods before me. So in scripture, God does acknowledge there are other gods. He appeals, he calls for true worship. But at the same time, should my politician take the biblical mantle, right? Should my politician take the Bible and begin to enforce my religious dogmas? on a world so divisive in their conviction and religious views, you better not because you're going to create serious opposition and persecution. It always been the case. And as long as I have an issue with that, and again, the best way to explain it is when it comes to the 10 commandments, the last six should be enforced by, by the state, by the politician men, by the church, which will speak highly for the last six is about protecting human lives, loving your neighbor as yourself, honoring your mother and your father and all of that, right? This is all good. Thou shalt not covet, thou shalt not lie, bear false witness. These are all good things. We should advocate for people to behave in these ways in a nation in order to protect each other. If you don't do that, you're not gonna have a nation long. But the second thing is the first four commandments, however, should not be touched. They should not be touched by any politician. To do that, you will violate freedom of religion, freedom of conscience, and you will fall into the dark ages apostasy. You will lead to massive persecution. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that's what's going to happen in the future. In Revelation chapter 13, verses 15 to 16, there will be persecution for not receiving the mark of the beast. That means there's going to be a violation of freedom of conscience in the last days anyway. And much more could be said about that. we got more videos coming up about this. But nevertheless, we should advocate for people to believe in the word of God. That's not, there's nothing wrong with that. As a matter of fact, we need more of that. That's lacking in our culture and it's not good. So much more could be said. I wanna hear your thought and perspective. Where do you stand? Do you believe we should be a nation under God or a nation under one God? Should we be ashamed of being Christian? Should we just put aside faith in Jesus just because we live in a world that has so many different religious views? Should we do away with that? Or should we enforce Christianity in society? Or should we just leave everyone to do whatever they choose to do based on their conviction? I would like to hear your thought on that. I got one final verse to share with you. It's coming from the book of Revelation chapter 22. You want to know how God thinks? I love the way God thinks. Look what's going on here. The spirit and the bride say, come. Let him that heareth say, come. And let him that is at thirst come. Whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. This is powerful. The spirit here is the Holy Spirit convicting the mind. He speaks to you. He says, come to Jesus. The bride here is the church. So the church is supposed to be calling people to Jesus, not the state, not politicians. That's not their job. 
it says whosoever will so there goes a respect of the will the power of decision is being respected here as well so you can't force it a person has to choose they have to be given an opportunity. He says, let him come and take the water of life freely. So I make this video to say, if you have a desire to become a Christian and you're looking for Bible study, you want to get to know more about the God of the Bible, get in touch with us. Get in touch with us. I have my email below. Send me an email and we can schedule a meeting where we can talk. Not on this setup, a Zoom call where we talk face to face about some of this stuff and address your conviction and assist you as much as possible as, as, much, as much as possible much more could be said about this video link in the description below like and subscribe to the page click the, the bell icon for more let's have the conversation i want to hear from you until next time have a good one bye